Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk about product development. Um, really, when we talk about product development, we're talking about value. And value is at the heart of what we do in marketing. In fact, uh, according to the American Marketing Association, uh, value is the very foundation of all marketing. Um, but it's really also about the intense competition that we find in most industries and for most popular products. And so to prevent losing customers, uh, in other words, to prevent losing market share, uh, marketers must design and promote better products, something that continuously over time enhances our product finds new uh, uses for, develops uh, new markets possibly, and so forth. But products especially that the customers out there, the consumers perceive as having better value. And that would be better in a couple of senses. Uh, first, better value than you had before uh, in your previous version of the product by that one change or upgrade you've made. Or, better value than any of the other products that you're competing with out there. So value is about good quality at a fair price. And it's really in the mind of the person who receives a transaction, the uh, good or the service, the consumer, what do they feel about it? Because value's got to be measured from the point of view of the person who receives that good or service. And so that's what really matters. Um, did they come away from that experience uh, with a sense of satisfaction? And, and think about the transactions that you've had yourself. Uh, when you feel you've got a good deal, uh, it tends to put a person in a good mood. You might talk about it to other people, what a good deal you got. Um, if you've got some great value or you just feel that it just went over and above what you expected it to do, or it lasted longer or performed better, whatever that is. Uh, those are all aspects of what we would consider value. And so for marketers, of course, and producers of goods and services, adapting products to find those new markets uh, is always an ongoing challenge. And to find new ways to enhance your product in, that are meaningful uh, in the minds of consumers and perceived by them as adding some sort of new value. Um, you would have to say that this product development is really a key activity of any modern business. Um, and at the same time that you're doing this, um, you're having to adapt to whatever the conditions are, whatever that business context and environment might be. The local conditions certainly are going to have a certain amount of influence and pressure on you, the competitors and the sources that you use to get the work done and so forth. But also, um, over time, uh, possibly abroad for you as well. And so many companies are not able to afford to have specialist managers or other individuals on their staff because of the expense. Um, when you're small to medium sized companies, they can't afford to have that uh, necessarily a scientist or a product expert or an uh, entrepreneur or something like that, an inventor on the staff. So you end up doing some what we call this distributed product development, where you actually hand off pieces that another company has already demonstrated some expertise in doing. So they're not reinventing the wheel or inventing a technology or a process. They're simply doing something that you're not able to do yourself. And so this is another place where companies will do some outsourcing. And this is happening internationally. Um, and you'll have to deal with the various factors that come up as you're dealing with that. Here's uh, some examples to bring these concepts home to you. Some famous foods, three of them here, and their development over time. Now this development was to increase value in response to what they found out that customers were thinking and feeling about their products and so forth, to beat the competition, to ingre indeed maintain and grow their market share. So here we have McDonald's Chicken McNuggets uh, invented in 1983, changed to an all white meat version in 2003. Um, many consumers were not happy with the fact that the McNuggets were not all white meat. And over time, um, they were able to push that change onto McDonald's 
Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, McDonald's came up with it without any consumer feedback. I would doubt so. Um, and But certainly uh, McDonald's responded to socioeconomic pressures uh, that called for reduced antibiotics in the chicken that they were using in their chicken McNuggets. So in 2015, they adopted a policy of reduced use of any uh, farm-raised chicken meat uh, that had lesser amounts of antibiotics than have been used in the past. And then the following year, um, removed all artificial preservatives as well. We see a similar sort of thing happening with Burger King fries. Um, you don't know it probably, but Burger King fries were about the worst French fries on the market for fast food for, well, just forever when they first came out. Uh, originally in 1953, uh, they changed their recipe in 1997, and it wasn't. It was for a good reason. People were complaining about them, and they had been for decades. Um, more complaints continued to come in after they changed the recipe yet one more time. In 2001, they changed the recipe again. They changed the recipe 10 years later in 2011, and they called it Satis Fries. Um, there's no Satis Fries today, as you know. Those were eliminated in 2014. Um, and we're, we're not really hearing too much from them on their normal French fries. They, they may have introduced some chicken fries or some other sort of product as a derivative. Um, but so far, their history with French fries hasn't gone well. But you can see it's been a constant effort at product development to find out what people perceive as a value and, and deliver that. And uh, for this particular product, not the best of luck. And then uh, Oreo is a little bit different. We just have a few things to talk about, um, but they did respond to social and economic uh, pressures to change a few things. Uh, invented in 1912, uh, Oreos were pretty much the same product forever. Uh, and then in 2006, similar to the way McDonald's responded to the crusade against the uh, use of antibiotics in the, in the chickens, they removed trans fat because there was so much uh, new evidence about trans fat is what contributes to high cholesterol in your blood and, and so forth. And they removed those in 2006. Um, they responded to further consumer pressure in the notion that we want people to perceive this as a value. Let's give them what they need and want. And what they wanted was a, a lower fat version of Oreos. So the 40 calorie version, the Oreo Thins, uh, were introduced in 2015. So these are all really good examples of product development over time, even though all they're somewhat different. Um, and they are in a response to uh, changing attitudes and tastes possibly, but the notion that products have to change over time to meet demand as it exists. All right, folks, that's what I want to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.